Hello, my friends. Welcome to my home studio in the beautiful Catskill Mountains in upstate New York. I'm John Morrell here at John Morrell Fragrance Review. And I know I said, you know, now that I'm back doing videos again, the next video I was going to do would be my top 10 niche fragrances because I did top 10 designer fragrances right before I kind of took a little break. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that right now because my man Tyler from Simply Fragrances gave me another tag. And so I want to get that out of the way. And, and by the way, a lot of these fragrances I'm going to talk about uh, will end up being in my top 10 niche fragrances as well. But it is, um, what are we doing? We're doing, if I had to start over with my fragrance collection, what would be the first 10 fragrances I would buy? Let's do it. John Morrell, Fragrance Review. Here come with the swag. Fresh and dope, like heroin soap. The man's got so I didn't overthink this. I actually did the opposite of overthink on this subject. I mean, I started, my brain started going, right? And, and I started doing that thing where I'm like, what do I love? And then I said, you know what? I'm not going to do that. See, I have three floors in my house. On my third floor is my recording studio, which I'm in now. And across the hall from my recording studio is a room with my shelves and all of my fragrances, or I should say most of my fragrances, because on the second floor where I have a walk-in closet, I have the fragrances I wear all the time. And so I said, you know what? I'm just going to talk about, I'm just going to put the, the top 10 fragrances I wear the most, because those are the fragrances I would need immediately because I wear them all the time. I'm not going to talk about, are they my favorite? I don't want to say that. They're not necessarily my favorite they're not necessarily uh, my, some of my all-time greats, although some of them are. They are the fragrances that I wear all the time. And when I say that, obviously you can't wear every fragrance all the time, but the fragrances I wear the most, so much so that I keep them on the second floor of my walk-in closet. So let's start with the one that's very obvious. You're going to know this fragrance I absolutely would buy again, probably be the first fragrance, although these aren't in order, but this would be the first fragrance I would buy, would be Elysium. Elysium changed the way I buy fragrances. I said this in my last video. So again, these, some of these fragrances are repeat. But uh, before Elysium, I was kind of a, a designer snob. I, I, you know, I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand why people would spend that much money on niche fragrances, right? But then when I got Elysium, I, I got it. And so Elysium is a fragrance I, I wear all the time. I buy clones of it. I've, I have like three different clones of it. I just love the DNA to this. I love the lemon, the lime top, the grapefruit. I love the, I'm, a, I'm an ambergris guy, you know that. So it's a fragrance that does last fairly well in me, but I wouldn't care. I just love the DNA to this fragrance. So uh, number one is Elysium by Roja Parfum. Next fragrance, I'm going to do two in a row because they're both in the same house. And I'm not going to go through the notes and all that, right? Because many of these fragrances I've talked about before. So, uh, I'm not going to do all that, right? And, and again, some of these are repeat fragrances. But next fragrance, again, may not be a surprise to you. Parfums de Marly, Percival. Absolutely love this fragrance. I wear it all the time. And I talked about last video why I feel this, this fragrance represents me. But I also wear it all the time. I really do. Uh, because I think it's, it's versatile. I think you can wear this any time of the year to any event, dressed up, dressed down. You could even wear it to the gym. So I wear that all the time. So again, Percival by Parfums de Marly and on the same house, Parfums de Marly. It's my date night fragrance. It's a fragrance I wear whenever I just went to dinner uh, for my, and I shouldn't say date night. It's my night out fragrance or date night fragrance. Uh, I just, my wife and I went out to dinner with my sister and her husband for her birthday. I wore this. I wear it every time I go out at night and it's, that's right, Leighton. Apart from Mr. Marley, come on. It's just, I don't talk much about this. It's amazing. If you're not a frag head, you don't have this fragrance, right? I mean, we do that thing where we pretend, you're like, you know, Leighton's kind of, uh, it's overplayed. By who? Again, yes, I know frag heads run out and buy this fragrance because everyone was talking about it and I get it because it is that damn good. However, if you go out to dinner, you go out to a club, you go out at night, no one is wearing Leighton. No one, <laughs> right? Unless you have some fraghead friends that come along. So Leighton from Parfums to Marley, 
That is another one that is a third on my list. All right, next fragrance to me is like a blue. I see this as like a blue collar fragrance, although it's niche. I don't know why. Like I don't wear this dressed up and I'm not saying it can't be uh, worn dressed up, but I don't wear it dressed up. I wear it dressed down. I, I do, preferably, uh, whenever I'm wearing just a, just a nice button down or, or button down flannel even. I, I don't know. If there's something about this that 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 smells fantastic, but it smells like a guy. Like it just smells like a dude, right? And and I'm talking by man Sarah Cedrat Boise. Cedrat Boise. It's uh, fantastic. And you can see how much I wear this. You can see how much I wear this. It's, it's fantastic. I just wore this to Easter dinner. I wasn't dressed up, you know, it was kind of a, just a laid back kind of early Easter dinner at my mother-in-law's house. And I wore that fragrance and it's just, it's out of this world. I think, I do think it has that leather and that, and that those uh, brighter top notes, uh, you know, bergamot, I think it has some lemon. It smells like it has lemon in there, but it, it has that leather that gives, I always said this to me, it has a slight, slight petrol feel in, in the fragrance, which to me gives it that manly kind of. Kind of, a, and it can be sexy. I've heard people say it's sexy. As a matter of fact, Curly Sense thinks it's very sexy. Curly Sense is the one that convinced me to buy it. She she was talking about it in in, in such a positive way uh, a while ago. Is when they were uh, Ross was wearing it, and and so uh, I said I have to get this. I mean, it's amazing how much she loves it. So so I went out and bought it, and I've had it for a while now, and you can see I wear it a lot. So Cedra Bose is my. Uh, fourth fragrance on the list by Mensa. The next fragrance is one that I wear every other day at least. I wear it to the gym. It's fantastic. It's perfect for the gym because it, it's not it's not intrusive, right? It, it, it doesn't project way out. So it, it's just your personal space. And uh, I'm talking about Allure Ohm Sport Oak Strim. This is a, a fragrance, an, an almond uh, musk, sort of some mint, obviously vanilla. I, you know, this is just fantastic. I do believe you can wear this anytime, anywhere, dressed up, dressed down. I just happen to wear it to the gym because it just fits what I need in the gym. I, I don't want something that projects way out. I don't want something where people go, oh, this guy's trying to, this guy's trying to smell good, but he's sweating. This is something that sits a little closer to you, lasts long enough. And uh, and, and if someone does get close enough to smell it, it smells fantastic. It's a, just a fantastic smelling fragrance. So yeah, Chanel Allure Homme Sport Oak Strim. Uh, I just, I wear it, like I said, every other day. So I'd have to have it. I have to. It's my gym fragrance. Speaking of gym fragrance, my next fragrance is something that I wear sometimes after the gym. Um, I, I, I don't wear this to the gym that much only because this does project. This is a projection and and longevity beast. Not something I really need at the gym. Uh, but sometimes after the gym, if I have, like, give me an example. The other day, I left the gym. I had to go to a meeting at work. I, I had to go right from the gym to a meeting. So uh, this is something I, ha I, I have. I have a backup bottle. My backup bottle is in my Jeep. And I jumped into the Jeep and I threw this on. Is Havas by Rosasi. This, this is fantastic. I mean, it's just fantastic. This is, again, all year round. I don't care. Warm weather, cold weather. It's such a beast that it will perform in any type of weather you need it to perform in. Uh, so, yeah, that that's. Uh, I just had someone the other day ask me, um, if it's a fragrance they should get. And uh, I didn't hesitate. I said, yes, get it. <laughs> Buy that fragrance. So it's it's affordable. It's like 45 bucks maybe on Amazon. That's the best place to get it. Believe it or not, Amazon actually has the best price on that. Rosasi has a store on Amazon and uh, Havas is like 45 bucks. It might go up a little bit here and there because everyone's talking about it now. I've been raving about this fragrance for a while and, and, uh, and I, I don't know. People didn't, people don't respect my opinion, I guess but people are finally talking about it. So Havas by Rasasi. My seventh fragrance is another fragrance I have a backup bottle of, something I absolutely adore. Again, I, I'm kind of repeating some of the fragrances and I apologize for that. But again, I, I'm just, I didn't overthink this. I'm just talking about fragrances that I would, again, top 10 fragrances I would buy if I had to restart my collection. And these are it because these, these are the fragrances I wear the most by far, by far. And I'm talking about uh, Brass and Soul, Hey, by Stay Fresh, Stay, can't talk. Brass and Soul by Stay Fresh Productions and Zaharoff. You know, this is one of my all-time faves. I have a backup bottle of this. I absolutely love it. Again, all year round. I think it's it's great. I wore it to a wedding, uh, and I think you can wear this 
anytime, anywhere. Um, but it's, it's, it's really great for outside events. It really is. It's just fantastic. And the dry down is great too, but the opening is just amazing. Uh, this is something, uh, I, I think everyone would like this. It's my wife thinks it smells a little like Irish spring and that's not a bad thing. It's, it, you smell very clean with the sun. It's fantastic, but it's, but it's a, it's a bright boozy. So Brass and Soul, Stay Fresh Productions and Zaharoff. It's number seven. Here's one, as soon as warmer weather hits. As soon as warmer weather hits, I'm wearing it. I, and I'm wearing it a lot. Uh, I know, really, I think this is a, a hot weather fragrance, but as soon as spring hits, I'm, I'm like, oh, here we go. So, so so since we've been getting some warm weather here on and off, it goes, it's cold today, but... Every almost every warm day that pops up, I'm putting this on in this Aqua de Parma Fico de Amalfi. Fico de Amalfi. Fantastic fragrance. Again, I've talked about this before. It smells more like it smells environmental. Um, it doesn't smell like you're wearing a fragrance. It smells like this is just how it smells in your area. I love this. It's beautiful. It's bright. It's a fig fragrance, um, but it's it's very floral. And there's some citruses. It's just fantastic. It's like a garden by the sea. Uh, I get decent performance out of something like this. You know, I get four hours, you know, which is fine. That's what I, and I got a little longer the other day, actually. It was, it was like 80 and it was like six hours. I was still catching whiffs of it as the breeze went, went by. So uh, I, I love it. And, uh, you know, I, I there's only two fragrances, to be honest, from Aqua de Parma that I love uh, right now. And it's Fico de Amalfi, of course. And it's the original Colonia. I'm going to be very honest. I have some of the uh, Colonia. I'm off topic here. But I have some of the Colonia, uh, some of the other Colonias, and I don't get them. I don't even get why they exist. You know, uh, the flankers, I don't get it. I don't get why they exist. The original is still by far the best. It doesn't perform great, but you can get it for like 40, 50 bucks, maybe 60 bucks at the most. So whatever, uh, for 3.4. So uh, I, that almost made my list. I have been wearing that quite a bit, um, but I had to cut something out. I'm trying to make a 10, so I did I did uh, cut something out. But that's almost like an honorable mention because I do wear it quite a bit. Uh, it's fantastic. You know, it is. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Fico de Amalfi, Aqua de Parma. Those two fragrances are by the same house. And th these may be surprising. I don't know. But these are two fragrances I would have to buy uh, immediately. Uh, it's in my top 10 fragrances I would have to buy starting my collection over. And the first one is just one of the most beautiful fragrances I've ever owned. It really is. It's very unisex, but I absolutely adore it. It's Photofafa. Photofafa by Happy Land Studio. It is patchouli. It's vanilla. There's some ambergris, I believe, in there. It's, uh, it, let me just tell you this. If it, it, it doesn't get enough due, it's criminally underrated. I don't even understand why it's not talked about, but here's the thing. People talk about Andy Warhol by Bond. Like it's this fantastic fragrance. And, and don't get me wrong. It is. I've, I've smelled it. I had a sample of it. Fantastic fragrance. That's iconic. And it's been discontinued. People are selling bottles for upwards of six, seven, eight hundred dollars. This is along that style. Now I have no idea if, if it was an inspiration for EJ or not. I have no idea. But this is along the same style except a little brighter and frankly just better. It's just better. I still have a sample of Andy Warhol and I compared the two and this is just better. This is gorgeous. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. So photo Fafa is something I wear frequently. If it's a nice, if it's a nice day, but it's below, if it's 70 or below, chances are I have this on. Uh, it's just fantastic. So that's, that's the first one. And the other one, second one, uh, last number 10 is also from happy land studio as well. It is my favorite tobacco fragrance of all time. Now, you know, I love tobacco fragrances. You know that John Vervato's Dark Rebel is one of my very favorites. Um, I, I may have said at one time it was my favorite. This has replaced it, uh, frankly, because it's just absolutely stunning. And it, the performance on it is outrageous. And it's Happy Land Signature. Okay, if you like tobacco fragrances and you don't have this, you're out of your mind. This is a honeyed tobacco with some, I believe it has some rum in it, but the top note is also, one of the top notes is blueberry and it sweetens it up. And it's, and you can't tell it's blueberry. It just sweetened. This is 
gorgeous. It's it's somewhat gourmand. I mean, which is wild to say for tobacco fragrances. I don't often call tobacco fragrances gourmandish, but this is this is just absolutely. So it has vanilla, obviously, but the, uh, vanilla tobacco. This is off the top of my head. That's what I get right away. So it's just honey, tobacco, vanilla, and that blueberry sweetens it up. But it's it's difficult to tell what it is. It's a, it's a you know it's a sweetener of some kind. It is the best, the best. I there, listen. I, there's a lot of tobacco fragrances fragrances I love. I love Zaharoff signature tobacco. I love it. It's a it's a it's a, that's more of a uh, fresh tobacco leaf. I, I do love that. But this is this is my favorite of all time. I will never as you can see. I mean, look at this. I will never be without it. I have it in my cart right now, Happy Land Studio. Uh, I do just uh, because I know I'm halfway through this and it's something I have to have. So, uh, But I want to thank everybody very much for watching. I'm not going to tag anybody. No one does the tags uh, anyway, except for me and Tyler. And Tyler doesn't want to tag him, but he already did it. He's the one who tagged me. So I don't want to uh, tag anyone and have them not do it. I have I've, I, I still have tags out there. I've tagged people in that they just never did them, like like months ago, a year ago. So I why back someone up on tags they're not doing? Uh, I want to thank everybody very much. And I will, I swear I'm going to get to, but you're going to see that a lot of the niche fragrances I just named are going to be in my top 10 niche. So it's almost going to be redundant, right? Just like my last video, I guess. But Trying to be real here. I'm not just going to, you know, I'm not going to throw different fragrances in there just to throw different fragrances in there. These are the ones I wear all the time. They're the ones I have to have. These are the top 10 fragrances I would buy if I was starting over. Well, yeah. John Morell, fragrance review. Here comes with the swag. Fresh and dope, like heroin soap. The man's got swag.